powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us here on the statewide noon news. I'm Samantha Harrelson. While fires continue to burn across the state, we go to Glacier National Park where multiple historic structures have burned and hundreds of people have been evacuated. Multiple residences and other buildings have burned as a result of the Howe Ridge Fire. Park spokeswoman Lauren Alley says many of those structures were in the Kelly's Camp and Wheeler Complex areas of the park. Seven private summer residences and additional outbuildings were lost at Kelly's Camp at the end of North Lake McDonald Road. The main Kelly's Camp house, a second cabin, and other structures under National Park Service ownership were also destroyed. Kelly's Camp began as a cabin resort in the early years of the park. In the 1960s, those cabins were sold to individual owners. The National Park Service believes three outbuildings of the National Park Service owned Wheeler residence, the Wheeler Boathouse, and the Boathouse at the Lake McDonald Ranger Station were all lost as well. The Howridge Fire, which was sparked by lightning over the weekend, has burned an estimated 2,500 acres. Multiple buildings and campgrounds have been evacuated, and a 32-mile stretch of the Going to the Sun Road has been closed. With many Montana crews out of state assisting with other fires, state officials say resources are stretched thin. The Northern Rockies Coordination Center says there are now four large incident fires burning across the state of Montana. Firefighting resources are down all across the nation. That's because many areas depend on mutual aid from federal and local agencies to battle the flames. Currently, the Northern Rockies preparedness level is four, just one level below the national level of five. And currently, of course, there are dozens of fires burning across the state. For more information on the fires that may affect you, you can head over to your local MTN website. Continuing our coverage today, the search for two people missing after a boating accident on Bighorn Lake is scheduled to continue today. The National Park Service Submerged Resources Center performed a sonar scan of the lake bottom on Monday. The information was reviewed overnight and will be used to direct search crews today. A dive team from Utah is also coming in to assist. The accident occurred Saturday night and the body of a Billings woman was recovered on Sunday. A Billings man is currently in serious condition. The Coast Guard is on scene, keeping the area secure. The lake is not closed, but access may be restricted during diving operations. Boaters should also expect delays and closures between day boards 5 and 9 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Turning now to court news, the Thomas Carnival employee accused of assaulting two women last month, month was back in a Cascade County courtroom. Roberto Garcia is now accused of sexually assaulting four females between July 30th and August 1st, two of which were under the age of 14. Garcia pled not guilty to all four counts of sexual assault. In all four cases, the females allege that Garcia deliberately touched them as he checked their seatbelt on the Speedway ride. And after several months of an extensive methamphetamine cleanup, a Missoula YMCA Learning Center has reopened. The interior of the child care facility was completely stripped and renovated to remove any traces after a former employee was discovered using the drug near kids. The facility for children ranging from infants through preschool is now updated with security cameras in every room and new door codes. Staff say many of their clients have been supportive of the 72 children, seven left over the ordeal. I think the term that it takes a village has um, really taken on a brand new meaning for me. Um, we're just thrilled to be back home. The team at the center is working with the YMCA on a new employee drug screening program. And in other news this afternoon, school is almost back in session, and when students return to class at, at Helen Airy Middle and Grade Schools this fall, they'll be greeted by new security features. The new security features include electronic key card access specific to each staff member and employee, a two-door entry system with security cameras, the ability to alert police of an emergency directly from the classroom, and electronic reader cards that can post emergency messages throughout the school. It's revolutionary to have something like this. You know, when we talk and look back on how we, when we went to school, you know, we're, we're faced with different challenges than we were when we were kids. The world is changing. And I think that the Helena School District is showing the community that we're adapting to the changing environment. And, and our kids are our most valuable asset. And we're going to keep them safe. 
C.R. Anderson, Helena Middle School, Fort Georgians, Rossiter and Warren schools received the security updates. Other schools in the area will get similar security upgrades over the next few years. Turning now to campaign news, the Montana Green Party is making a new attempt to get its candidates back on the state ballot this fall. The Green Party filed suit late Monday in federal court. It's asking a judge to strike down part of Montana's party ballot qualification law and order the Green Party's five candidates placed back on the November ballot. The suit is responding to a state court order in July, removing the candidates from the ballot. The order invalidated 82 voter signatures used by the Green Party to qualify for the ballot and caused the party to fail meeting their signature gathering requirements. Monday's lawsuit says those requirements are unconstitutional and the Green Party had candidates for the U.S. House, Senate and House races as well as three legislative candidates. The deadline for making ballot changes is just two weeks away. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on the new news. Coming up, dramatic video of a major bridge collapse in Italy. We'll have those details for you. But first, it's hard to remember those 100 degree weekend temperatures now that we've cooled down so much. But what do we have in store for the rest of the week? Ed has your full forecast right after the break. You're watching MTN News with Samantha Harrelson, Storm Trekker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.